we wouldn't be talking about Eleanor Azaria if it, the execution wasn't on a film. Let's be honest. I mean, like you said, this is this is commonplace. This is systematic. It's institutionalized. However, I, I, I do want to talk about how even before he was charged with manslaughter, it was a slap on the wrist at the beginning. I don't know if there was just international pressure that, that mounted at a certain point where they felt like they had to take the investigation forward. But even then, it was a very stark contrast between how right-wing Israelis reacted mm -hmm. to just a house arrest verdict um, than, let's say, people here when a police officer shoots and executes an unarmed black man. And, and usually you have protests in the street against the police trying to get accountability there. In Israel, it seemed like there was mass rallies in support of El Rosaria. You know, of course, it's not surprising. Israel is selling this idea of the soldiers are more important than anything. The soldiers are more important than the life of Palestinians. Not only the life of soldiers, the soldiers' identity, uh, you know, security, feelings are more important than a Palestinian life. The easiness, uh, the comfortable of people going out to the street and defending every case of manslaughtering that was captured on tape that is clear that his life is not in danger, you know, they contradict everything that we are being told. And yet, Israelis are saying in a very clear voice, not only that we don't believe in that, not only that we will oppress Palestinian and will act as much as, you know, do whatever we want, but in a very specific way saying, don't uh, confuse us with the idea of moral or right or wrong, Whatever soldiers do in the occupied territories are right. Whatever we're doing is the correct thing. I want you to talk specifically about the culture within the Israeli military that fosters anti-Arab sentiment and racism, essentially. Yes, I, I think the system, you know, uh, is not only inside the military. It's, it's like, like I said before, that's actually what being an Israeli means. Being an Israeli growing up in the Israeli educational departments, you understand that all the Arabs hate you, that they're actually, in a way, the continuation of uh, the biblical Amalek or, uh, or Hitler, or, you know, that everybody there wants to throw you into the sea. This is what you're growing up with, and you really believe in that. I mean, going into the military, you're already going so full of hate and fear at the same time that you don't need much to be uh, very aggressive, violent, and, and racist toward Palestinians. They see the Palestinian women and the Palestinian men as subhuman. Uh, the occupied territories are like an ex-territory when those human beings are not considered to be human beings. This is a, a process that you start in a very early age, being enforced inside your boot camp, and later on when you're going into your service, when you do not see human beings in front of you. Do not believe their uh, sorrow, do not believe their smiles, do not believe their feelings. They are sub-human. But they look just like you. I mean, there's so many Arab Jews. It's incredible. Yeah. Like yourself. <laughs> yeah, and I think that the, the Arab Jews in Israel are probably the most tragic story in the entire story of Zionism after the Palestinians. Uh, you know, and it's not being talked enough, obviously, inside Israel society or in the world. The Mizrahi Jew, the Arab Jews that came around the years of 50 and onward into Israel, uh, some came by choice, came by, some came by force, but they didn't came to a country that was theirs came only about two years after Israel was already gave out much, most of the land into the European people. And they understood that they cannot hold the territory alone. They need more people on the ground to fight off Palestinians or Palestinian refugees if they will come back. And then they went off and brought most of the Arab Jews and put them in the most terrible places in Israel, on the borders, on the borders with Egypt or Jordan or uh, Lebanon and Syria. We put them at buffer zones to protect us from Palestinians. Some of them came in the Sivans. Uh, the Zionist organization sends delegations into these Arab countries. 
uh, and called the Jews there to come into Israel, the Jewish homeland. Many of them didn't want to. Many of them, like in Iraq or Egypt, had a good life or in Morocco and wanted to stay. They didn't know what will be the destiny of this new country that understood that there's very much likely that a lot of wars will go on there. They felt protected in those countries and they said no. And the Zionist organization sent another delegations into some of these countries of people this kind as Arabs from those countries they terrorized those people to try to force them to come into Israel. They were born synagogues. We have testimonies today that talks about how they ran after people in the street and beat them down as so-called Arabs from Morocco, from uh, Egypt or Iraq, trying to scare them. And immediately after that, more people from the Zionist movement would come and say, you see, the only safe place you have is Israel. You have to come now. And after they came, they were being sent into the most uh, uh, disgusting forms of uh, settlement for the newcomers from those Arab countries, being sprayed from DDT uh, with, uh, with uh, gas, trying to clean them up before they joining into the uh, Ashkenazi, the European kids, to play with them. They were separated and segregated for years that was not their country and it's still not their country. And what they had to do to start to assimilate themselves inside this new country was to make sure that everybody understood that they're actually not Arabs. They look like Arabs, they talk Arabic, but they're not Arabs, they're Jewish. Because you can be an American Jew and you can be a European Jew, but you cannot be an Arab Jew in Israel. And they erase their identity and they starting to form what we know today as the most extreme right in Israel. They are the extreme right because they have to solidify themselves as the most loyal citizens of the states. You hear this as a cycle of violence, though. And every time I bring up, you know, especially being on the ground in the West Bank, visiting the Dewabsha family mm -hmm. or who's left of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whenever you bring up these these horrifying stories and accounts of terror on behalf of the Israeli settlers, a lot of people just say, what about the stabbing attacks? What about, you know, what about the terrorist attacks on behalf of Palestinians? And it's painted as a, as a equal fight, as a cycle of violence. And then you have um, the, the truck attack that just happened in Jerusalem. As a former soldier, how do you view these attacks? How do you view the stabbings, especially when they are directed at soldiers? Well, as an ex-soldier, uh, I learned very personally that if you will not respect existence, you can expect resistance. And this is how people resist. Uh, Israel as a state like to use the, the idea that Palestinians only understand force or power. But the truth of the matter is that Israelis only understand power and force. Every other attempt from Palestinians to try to negotiate this situation in a diplomatic way was uh, countered by more attacks, more oppression, uh, and more occupation, more stealing of the land, more destroying of homes, more settlements being built. We decided to call uh, we're going into the UN a diplomatic terrorism and to go into the ICC, uh, you know, international terrorism. We basically describe every form of resistance as terrorism, because the sole idea of the occupation is not to be safe. The sole idea is to create an ethnically cleansed uh, piece of land only for Jewish people with Palestinian workers. Uh, of course, some Palestinians can stay and do stuff for us, but this is our land. What people maybe don't understand is that Israel is creating the conditions in to uh, the situation of constantly having to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. We're creating this situation by oppressive, oppressing millions of people until they do uh, a, a phase where they have no other choice by resist. So many of these people lost a family member, uh, had been to prison or lost someone in prison and understood that nothing could be changed because the truth is that Israel do not hear the diplomacy. Israel do not hear the calls of Palestinians for equality. What we are seeing in Palestine is what a lot of people like to describe as the most uh, complicated political situation of our time. It's probably the most simple uh, situation, political situation of our time. It's a situation about equality. 
It's amazing that you say that, Iran, because this is painted as the most complex, the most hard to solve. Uh, it, they've been fighting over there for thousands of years. You know, you hear these these things, but really, it really does come down to basic equality and humanity. Mm -hmm. um, do, would you say that you support the right of Palestinians to fight their occupiers? Absolutely. I support the right of every human being uh, under an oppressive military rule to resist this military rule by any means uh, possible. Uh, I do not believe that Israel have a right to occupy millions of human beings without every decent uh, human, simple, basic human rights uh, for their name. And I do not believe that Israel would change uh, on its own. At no point in history there was uh, a state or a power that had the power to control over other human beings and benefit from it and just decided to let go of this power by its own. It was always forced on them by the resistance of the people underneath them or the intervention of other forces around the world. And unfortunately, uh, I, as I do support the Palestinian right to resist in any way, I do not believe that their resistance is enough. I do believe that the rest of the world have to interfere in what's going on in Palestine. There's nothing else that we can do except for giving all the Palestinians equal rights and starting a new state, a new uh, equality system for all human beings on the ground.